Podcast. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of You Know What It Is. It's Form Check Friday. These are all viewer submitted videos of powerlifting. I myself am a powerlifting competitor and coach. Been doing this for 10 years now. Ooh old man. Anyways, uh, we're going to dive into this. If you're interested in submitting, go ahead and check the description box below. We have a way for anyone who wants to, to submit their lifts. Now we're going to start off with the lifter that we left off with last time. And that is Kieran. So Kieran, uh, for anybody who wasn't here last time, is doing some squats. Uh, this is 90 kilos. It is his second set of five reps. He, and he says he notices his hips shooting up behind him. What he means by that is his hips are coming up uh, and, and causing his torso angle to kind of change, right? Your butt's shooting up behind you. They call it a squat morning, maybe. Um, now, he says he also kind of does some weird stuff with his torso towards the top. He feels anyways, um, like he's throwing his torso super upright to try to, you know, account for this. So. When we left off here, we had a bunch of comments in the last video, uh, in the in the comments section of people giving their opinions and advice. I think a lot of that advice was really, really good. Um, what we're gonna do here is, uh, I think the first thing I want you to work on, Karen, is our bracing. So you can see as we come out of the bottom on the descent, we have this really nice sort of like neutral range back position. As we come out of the bottom, you'll notice that we really do this, this sort of like arching, driving the chest up. And I think that's what you're talking about in your email, how you try to, you know, counteract that feeling of your hips coming up behind you by really driving your chest up. So one of the things that I, I would look at is, is maybe a heeled shoe to allow you to get depth a little bit easier. I think if it's easier and you have to lose less position to get good powerlifting depth, you'll be able to maintain more tightness, which again is a, is a really, really good thing to have when it comes to the powerlifting style squat. Now, this slight change in back position can cause uh, a really pronounced sticking point as we get into heavier weights because we're spending more time and energy trying to regain this super upright position than we are just pushing with the legs. Um, and because the, the trunk is actually changing positions, it's less able to transfer force from the legs through to the bar. And we just want a, a very rigid, packed, and, and consistent torso position. We don't want to be going into a little bit of flexion and then going into extension and then changing our back position throughout. So what I want you to do is on the way up, your, your torso position is great on the way down. Just keep it the same. Don't worry about trying to arch up. Um, think about being a little bit patient out of the bottom. I think one of the things that people get caught up in in the squat because it's kind of a, of the three lifts, I would say it's the most psychologically demanding uh, and maybe that's a personal thing, but uh, you know, you get to the bottom of a squat and anybody who's missed a squat knows how you know, kind of scary it is, right? Uh, you get to the bottom, you can't stand back up. You're just getting stapled by this bar. You got to either ditch it or throw it off your back. It's this big sort of, you know, event. Whereas if you miss a bench, you know, you, you got to do the roll of shame, but whatever, you're already laying down. If you miss deadlift, it just doesn't come off the floor. So I think what happens is a lot of people start to get maybe a little nervous about that bottom position. And they think like, shoot, if I don't come up fast, I might not come up at all. But when people rush these positions, a lot of the times what happens is things like this, right? We start like, oh shoot, we gotta get upright. We gotta, we gotta change our position. Uh, and I think if you can just learn to be a little bit patient with your trunk, like just keep this, man, this looks so good. Just push, just be patient, push, make sure you're using your quads. And a lot of the times that first phase of the movement, the very first little bit, out of the bottom being a little slow is just going to set you up to be in a better position and be nice and smooth through lockout. So overall, I don't see any massive problems with your squat. I think the biggest thing is that we're losing a little bit of position in the bottom, right? So that's why I think a heel chew, maybe get depth a little easier, um, you know, and, and you're able to maintain a little bit better tightness. Uh, and number two, don't rush that chest up. Keep the chest down a little bit. Keep the ribs pulled down on top of the abs. Keep those lats nice and tight in the back and just push through your feet like you're doing a leg press. You know what I mean? Just push through your feet and uh, and you'll be good. All right, so our next lifter here is gonna be Alex. Now, Alex has, uh, he says, hit a major plateau in the last few months. He's looking for some technical advice. 
Now his goal is to pull 660 at 220, so the old three times body weight. It's a very admirable goal. Uh, the comp PR is 617. His gym PR is 645, and this set is 605 for two out of 10. So, um, it almost looks like maybe we don't get that second rep, but that's okay. So, number one, it looks to me like we're starting way out over the bar. I think you could do a better job uh, of kind of pulling yourself in to the bar, pulling your hips maybe back, getting your weight back on your heels a slight bit more, and kind of loading your legs. Right now, it looks like because our torso's out over the bar, um, you know, we're, we're losing a lot of back position. We're maybe getting a little further pulled forward off the floor. So right there, yeah, you're bringing your hips more towards the bar than you are bringing the bar back towards you, right? So I think if we have a little more straight up and down shin angle, we're gonna be able to pack more of ourselves a little bit behind the bar. We're gonna be able to wedge in a little more effectively. And this second rep here, I mean, I, I don't think we get it, right? So I think that the other thing is uh, after that first rep, which Again, the lockout's pretty questionable on, right? Uh, not sure we're getting full hip extension. We're definitely not getting full knee extension. So lockout on the first rep is, is a little questionable. And at that point, I probably wouldn't have gone for a second rep. Now, it's really tough for me to get a, a firm grasp on your training based on one video, very little context, and two reps. But if this is the kind of intensity and, and quality of work that we're getting in our training, this could be what's holding us back. And uh, I, I will be a little bit blunt here, but you need to be putting in quality work, right? We can't just be going in and kind of, you know, jacking into the bar and like, clearly you're a strong guy. You can get away with doing this stuff, but to a point. And that's where that top end is really going to start to be, you know, uh, harder and harder to eke out those extra few pounds or kilos. So the other thing I think you could work on a, a fair bit is how you're pulling into tension, right? So again, here, your shoulders are starting over the bar, like in front of the bar, and then you pull your hips into position underneath you, where I think you should be pivoted back a little more weight on your heels. And then from this position, it should be way more of a push from the legs because the trunk should already be very, very tight as opposed to what I think happens here is we try to just pull back and kind of jerk back on the bar, right? So at this point, not a bad position, but again, we're way out in front of the bar, right? We're probably pretty far on the toes because of how we started in our starting position. And then we end up, you know, mm, questionably locking that out. So that would be another thing I would work on is make sure you get good solid lockouts. Um, I would probably ditch the straps as much as possible. Now, I don't know what your gym situation is. Maybe this was a day you had to go to a different gym or use a different bar or whatever. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of value in, in working the grip strength when it comes to, you know, you mentioned that your comp PR is 617, your gym PR is 645. And again, I don't, I, I can't do anything but assume, you know, the gap there may be partially due to grip differential. differential. So I think getting the grip strength sorted out, uh, you know, letting the grip almost be a limiting thing for a while might not be a bad idea for you, given the fact that we're training with a very, very high intensity here. I would say this is 605 for like, one ish out of 10 because we definitely don't get two reps um so yeah adjusting sort of what you see as optimal training uh, i think is probably going to be pretty important to this whole process now i've mentioned this before but we do obviously have the calgary barbell training app you can check that out at calgarybarbell.programs.app and in the description description box below we just put out the new path of powerlifting three program on there uh we have 37 i think programs available as well as a discord for program questions and form checks just like this one so if you're interested check that out now I think that uh, we've talked enough about that. So we're gonna get on to Melky, also doing some deadlifts here. So uh, Melky says he's 15. He's just started lifting about eight months ago and he's wondering how to improve his deadlift. So he weighs 135 pounds. He says he has trouble locking out and pulling the slack. And this set here was one of the first times he really tried to kind of work on pulling the slack out and he's not sure that it worked super well for him. So. Uh, one of the biggest things here is going to be just a lot of practice, right? You, you've only been lifting for eight months. You've already got a pretty damn good look in sumo deadlift. So 
don't beat yourself up or don't think that you're doing something wrong. Uh, part of this is just accumulating a lot, a lot of practice. The other thing I'm seeing here is this extremely wide stance um, that I think, you know, we've talked a little bit about this maybe in last week's form check, I think we talked about this, but we have this kind of like inward angle from the, the, uh, the heel to the knee. And I think that a lot of the times, if we can get the heel pretty much straight down from the knee, we can create a little bit more tension. We can create a little bit more stability and uh, sturdiness. Now, we're noticing, uh, or you're, sorry, you, you mentioned specifically that you're having trouble locking out. And I'm also noticing this very, very narrow grip. Now, when we grip super narrow, we're kind of crowded in in the shoulders, and it can be hard to get a good upper back positioning. And when we can't get a good upper back positioning, a lot of the times we can't get enough upper, upper back tightness, we end up losing a little bit of lower back positioning as a result of that. So what I would recommend is grip a little bit wider so that you can create better tension in your upper back and that's gonna carry through to your lower back and when the lower back is a little more stable and rigid, a lot of the times the lockout becomes way smoother and way better. Um, other than that, like I think we're I think we're doing a pretty good job. The the whole pulling the slack thing I think is mostly just a lot of practice. And what I would recommend is when you're warming up, try to make the bar float, right? Sit down, pull in, find tension slowly. Uh, don't worry about like pulling down and like find the tension, let's go kind of thing. Uh, you know, take your time, set your hips high. We've got a video on this. Um, maybe Dylan can link it or something. We got a video on this. Put your hips up nice and high and find that tension through your hamstrings and hips. Then pull your hips down, find the tension in your quads, and then pull your shoulder blades down into your back or your front pockets, depending on, you know, where it feels good to kind of position those shoulder blades and find the back tension. So hip and hamstring tension, then quad tension, then back tension, and, and try to find a formulation that process that helps you create a good consistent starting point each and every time that and you know do 10,000 more deadlift reps and i think you'll have a pretty damn good pull uh, i mean i'm excited to see anybody that young starting to lift because i think it's fantastic for you uh and i you know when i was that age i lifted zero now i pull world records so imagine what you could do right that's what i'm trying to get out there now up next we have helen Helen's doing some bench press here. She's been powerlifting for six months. She said she's done two bench competitions in the IPF. Uh, bench is her favorite exercise, but she's worried because uh, a lot of the times or some of the times her butt comes up off the bench and she would like a little bit of advice. So let's take a look at the bench press here. Looks like a pretty good solid pause. And what I want is for everyone in the comments uh, or everyone watching this video, I'm gonna put myself down here out of the way. For everyone watching this video, go ahead and head down into the comments section below and let us know what you think Helen could do to improve her bench press. Are you seeing anything with her leg drive that would cause her butt to come up off the bench? Let me know. Anyways, I'm gonna come back next week and I'm gonna give my critique on Helen's bench and see if I can help troubleshoot some of this stuff. Until then, we'll see what y'all have to say. Next week, peace.